it, for me, it's wonderful to hear all these stories about how different how different pieces of the property were used in different in different times, and it gives me a, a richness to understand a lot more about the history of our school. What I'm also going, now going to ask um, Mrs. Jennifer Bryson to come and speak a little bit from the perspective of the board, as well as the facilities um, committee chair, as well as an alumni parent. She can give a, a, a good understanding about the project and what it is and, and what we're looking to do with it. Jenny. So I think it'll be helpful to have that and, and um, you know, be, be able to talk about it. And just for people that don't know me, I'm Jennifer Bryson and I'm on the board, head of the facilities committee, and also a longtime parent and uh, just general gal about at the school. <coughs> we have, uh, my husband John is here and we have three graduates and are so grateful for the school. We also happen to have an old barn and so we, we kind of have a thing about barns. And I've been very interested and passionate about this barn for so long. I think John was one of the fathers that recited it years ago. But I, I'd like to just give you an overview of our project and what we'd like to do with it and what are the next steps and what are we looking for to help us to get that done. The general purpose is to take this space, first of all, to save it. We want to save it because it's, a, it's just a tremendously beautiful part of our campus. And we want to turn the downstairs into a school store community space, turn the upstairs into a faculty space. That's the general idea, but I want to talk a little bit more in detail about those two, two things and how we want to go about doing that. And just to give you a little bit of background on our school property, I mean, I'm sure some people know this in general, but the school dates to about 1830, the, the house and a lot of the original barns are from about 1830. That was the time in this area that a lot of farms came into the area. First, it was more the Dutch that settled this area historically. And the, most of the buildings are about the same vintage. The house was probably there first, could have been the barn. It was actually pretty common that they would build the barn first. And to put this building in perspective with some of the other buildings, you do have the Golden House, the original farmstead. To the left of that is a very large, beautiful threshing barn. The threshing barn was where they separated the wheat from the chaff. Absolutely gorgeous barn and the crown jewel and come back in 10 years or five years, we're gonna have a fundraiser for that. <laughs> we also had our tractor <coughs> barn, which is now a classroom. That would have been, again, a place where they just stored mechanics and things like that. This barn, the reason it's at the uh, edge of the road there was probably it originally started out as a wagon house. And then I have no idea about the mechanical past of that, I love it. And if you go upstairs, you can see some, first of all, be careful on the stairs. Um, we're we're going to change those. <laughs> but there's some beautiful, um, just really fun stuff up there that I think speaks to it as having been used for grain storage and probably hay storage. Probably before there were mechanical tools in there, I'm thinking that it was wagons and probably horses were kept in there as well. So it's a very important part of the school. Visually, architecturally, is the vernacular. I like to talk about the vernacular of the school and maintaining that. That that's a part of. I know for me, that was part of the goosebumps when I came here the first time. Is how beautiful it was. So back to the scope um, with the school store. What we'd like to do, and again, I'm going to talk about the process. This might look a little bit different, but this is the general concept as you go through the um, ground floor on that little gravel drive somehow, get over there without getting hit by a car. I'm gonna think about that a little bit. But the ground floor ends up being our school store, so we envision display cases and a small kitchenette or something like that on the ground floor, and furniture that can one day be kind of a bunch of people just sitting in a handwork circle, could be a bigger school store or an event at a holiday. Like, so it's re we want to think about the whole space being infinitely usable for lots of different functions and ideas. But in general, it's an open space. If you look at the building now on that first floor, there's a wall that goes right down the middle with some beautiful old beams that we'll hope to recycle. But we plan to take that wall out so that we can have one big space. And then to get to the second floor, right now the current plan is you can do that one of two ways. Either you can go around the back and there'll be a door where you can so a faculty person could just kind of miss the whole school store thing and go right up and do what they need to do. Or also go through the school store 
and be able to go up the stairs that way. And what's nice with that is if there, someone is upstairs working, they can come downstairs and hopefully grab a cup of coffee, or there's going to be a powder room downstairs if we can raise enough money. Um, upstairs, again, big open space, infinitely modular furniture, so one minute you can have a faculty meeting and the next minute you can have people just sitting at desks kind of doing their own thing. There'll be some storage up there, be a couple of work desks, probably lots of supplies <coughs> where people will be able to do things, but the idea is it's just a very functional space for our faculty to do private, you know, individual work and meeting work. Um, the budget this is uh, not a particularly scientific number. Uh, I kind of threw the dartboard at the board, and it says 60 to 100 grand. And I think that's a really, actually, pretty good number right now. And the biggest driver of that number is going to be whether or not we put a bathroom in there. A powder room is really going to make that much more useful space. That's going to come down to, um, can, will the town allow us to do that? When we went through our permitting process, we did not have that in there at the time, but if we can demonstrate to them that we have the septic capacity, we should be able to do it from a permitting standpoint, and our septic field is right out there. We should be able to you know, hook up to that. But that's where our biggest costs are going to come. To bring water out there is not particularly expensive, but then to connect to the septic and put a bathroom in and all the issues. So I would love to see us raise money toward the high end of that range so that we can have a powder room out there. I think it'll make a big, big difference. Where are we with permits? When we did the work on the tractor shed back in 2010, 2011, we applied for master plan approval and site plan approval. And this building was included with that. So to build something in Montgomery Township, you need three sets of permits. Master plan, which is what are you thinking about the school for five, ten years from now? <clears throat> Site plan is where you're just saying where are the buildings, where are things getting drained, where do I have gravel? That's like that's the thing that gets the engineers really excited. The third stage of permits is construction permits. So we have those first two sets, master plan and site plan, done. And let me tell you, they're the big ones, they're the expensive ones. That's when you have to go in front of the zoning board. And the questions are just incredible and exhausting. That's done. So we have something huge already in our pocket for this building. The third phase is electric, plumbing, you know, that's, that should go relatively easy. So how would we envision this process is to now, like starting tomorrow, go out and get a builder involved. We want to identify some builders to bid on the process or bid on the project, and then have them actually become our architects, have them finish the design. They're gonna to have to be the ones to do the structural analysis. We've told them that we want that center wall taken out. We're gonna tell them right up front, we know there's some beams in there that need some work, we have some structural issues. They're gonna to have to go figure out what needs to be done to deal with all that. And then they will actually apply for all the permits on our behalf with Montgomery Township. Once that's approved, we can break ground and get started on it. So the idea is to keep this simple from a contractual standpoint. Design, build, one contractor, and it's all the headaches are theirs, not ours. Our only headache is coming up with money. Uh, so I think to create that kind of space for our faculty is such a gift, and, and they deserve it. Second thing is, our school store makes about $5,000 a year. Imagine if we actually had a space that you could just walk into 